The Royal Air Force rescue team gazed at the hellish spectacle in front of them. They were alone in the middle of the North Sea, and one of the world's largest oil platforms was consumed by flames and thick clouds of smoke. Nearby, a rescue boat was making a Herculean effort to save as many men as possible, but the circumstances at Piper Alpha were dire. The rescuers were told that over 220 workers were trapped inside the flaming structure, that they could hardly see anything beyond a few steps. Footage from helicopters circling the area showed several explosions and the rescuers and paramedics trying to get closer while retrieving anyone in sight. Suddenly, the platform started to collapse. Hyper Alpha. The Piper oil fields were discovered in 1972. They were located about 120 miles northeast of Aberdeen, Scotland, and oil extraction started in 1976 at a rate of over 250,000 barrels of oil per day. The oil was exported through a subsea line that was over 128 miles long and ended up in a refinery located on Flota in the Orkneys. Piper Alpha, the name given to the imposing fixed platform that sat directly above the Piper oil field, comprised four modules that were separated by firewalls. The modules were arranged following standard safety protocols so that the most dangerous operations took place far from the areas where the workers rested. However, it all changed when Occidental Petroleum Limited was granted permission to produce gas in tandem with the oil. As such, a gas treatment plant was fitted in the modules, breaking several safety protocols. The gas compression room was built right next to the control room, the most important area on the entire platform. From 1978 onwards, Piper Alpha was producing natural gas and crude from 36 wells. The gas treatment plant worked flawlessly for a while. Once the gas was compressed and cooled by expansion, it was prepared for export. The condensate gas was then placed in a large vessel that was connected to two pumps and then injected into the oil for export. Following United Kingdom gas requirements to avoid waste of gas, a new gas conservation module was installed. During Phase 1, excessive gas was flared, and during Phase 2, it was exported. From 1980 to 1988, Piper Alpha operated under Phase 2. Pump A Maintenance July 6, 1988 was just another ordinary day for the 226 crew members on Piper Alpha. Early in the morning, two condensate pumps that were used to displace the platform's condensate for transport to the coast were inspected. The safety valve from pump A was removed for routine maintenance and was temporarily sealed with a blind flange or a metal disc. For unknown reasons, the maintenance process was not finalized and the metal disc was left in place for a day. The supervisor then wrote down a permit stating that pump A could not be used for that reason. However, as the day shift ended, the incoming workers were not told about any of this, and the permit was somehow lost. At 9.45 p.m., Pump B suffered a problem and could not be restarted. To avoid interrupting the continuous supply, it was decided to turn on Pump A. After a quick inspection, the workers apparently did not spot the missing valve from Pump A and assumed everything was okay. The manager then proceeded to turn it on. The first explosion. Jeff Bolins was the control room operator on July 6th. He later recalled during an interview with the BBC, quote, We had a problem, which was very much a routine problem, which we'd seen a lot of times before. What we called the condensate injection pump shut down. There wasn't panic about that, because the condensate pumps tripped more than any other piece of equipment. He noticed the alarm in the control room and didn't give it much thought, but at 9.55 p.m., something strange happened. Over a dozen alarm lights suddenly switched on, 
with the deafening sound of a hundred klaxons. An unexpected explosion came next, and Bolins and his men from the control room were knocked off their feet and thrown to the floor. Those who were sleeping were thrown from their beds, while others fell to the floor and heard a high-pitched screeching scream before seeing a bright flash that culminated in a second explosion. The metal disc from Pump A had given up to a condensate overpressure, leading to a leak, and the gas ignited and exploded before any worker could notice it. Taking Action The second explosion blew right through the firewall panels, and the fire quickly spread to modules B and C. One of the dislodged panels ruptured another condensate pipe and gave way to another powerful explosion. The footage taken from the boats nearby shows how the thick clouds of smoke had almost encircled most of the facility, giving an insight into the perilous conditions the workers faced inside. Meanwhile, Olin's activated the rig's emergency stop button in the control room to close the valves in the sea lines and stop extraction. But it was too late. Dense black smoke and secondary fires had engulfed the platform's upper portion, and a giant fireball went up the sky and illuminated the pitch-black darkness that covered the North Sea. Almost ten minutes later, the crew was able to send three maydays before the control room was completely consumed by the flames. The alarms then went silent, and most of the workers at Piper Alpha were confused about what was happening. With the emergency equipment destroyed and electricity almost gone, the men were left to their own means. Piper Alpha collapses. At 10.05 p.m., the Royal Air Force stationed at Lossiemouth and Bulmer picked up the emergency calls and immediately dispatched a Sea King helicopter and a Hawker Siddeley Nimrod. Meanwhile, Another explosion shook the platform after a high-pressure gas line ruptured, generating a prolonged pressure gas fire with immense heat. The effects of this explosion were felt by vessels located hundreds of yards away. The footage shows the violent eruption of flames that went straight to the sky in a vertical line and how a secondary explosion shook the entire facility just minutes later, leading to more fire that began to consume the floor in the lower sections. The workers in the northwest area then jumped into the sea in a desperate attempt to survive. Over 20 men, including the diving team, were able to leave the platform, while the rest gathered at the accommodation block. A rescue and accommodation vessel named Theros then approached the platform and used her water cannon to diminish the fire, but it was to no avail. The ship had to step away after the intense fire from another exploding pipeline began to melt the steelwork nearby. In addition, a rescue boat sent by the Sandhaven ship was destroyed during the explosion, leaving only one survivor. By 11 p.m., 39 workers had been able to escape, but the rest remained in the accommodation module. 20 minutes later, another gas line ruptured and exploded, and more fire and fuel began to melt the steel platform. Hyper Alpha then tilted to the east, while its western portion abruptly collapsed. Aftermath. The Royal Air Force rescue team arrived at Piper Alpha half an hour before midnight. The team immediately contacted Theros and began extracting survivors to make space for more men. Workers were still jumping into the sea after more blocks from Piper Alpha began to fall, and at 11.50 p.m., Module D finally collapsed. Footage taken from the sky shows the remains of Piper Alpha, already collapsing, with the platform's remains now fully consumed by the flames. Soon, more vessels and helicopters arrived at the scene to accelerate the rescue operation, but several explosions followed. The smoke and burning fires made it difficult to spot any survivors. The rescuers still continued giving it their all. At 12.45 p.m., Piper Alpha was completely gone. Only Module A remained standing, and the casualties were considerable. The Piper Alpha disaster 
is still considered the world's worst offshore disaster in history. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Duck Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos. Also, let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and stay tuned for more.